okay, um, relative to, I guess, the common thread with all three of these batteries is uh, one is they all have communications integration with the major power electronics platforms. So we can do closed loop uh, communications with Studer, Victron, Schneider Electric, SMA, Solark, any of the major manufacturers with modern communications. That allows us to broadcast our battery information over their networks. That's one common thread. The other is that, and this is probably goes part and parcel to the fact that we specialize in off-grid, micro-grid, and whole home backup power applications. They're all very high current batteries. So we can do 1C continuous charge and discharge um, for any of these battery models. So that's 130 amps in that case, 60 amps in this case, and 100 amps in this case on a continuous basis. And they all surge to 3C, which is, again, 390 amps, 180 amps, and 300 amps. Okay, so uh, they're all, well, they're all different actually. So this battery, the bigger one, the original battery we had in the market is, it's although it's lightly IP protected and things like this, to do an outdoor installation, you wanna put it in a cabinet, okay? Um, otherwise it's in interior mounted and things like that and basically it's just humidity free. This particular battery is IP65 rated, so it's completely weatherproof. It's actually immer it could be immersed in water if you wanted to. So where we're selling that product is uh, like uh, the Caribbean areas like this where let's say economics and residential home space force outdoor designs where you don't necessarily want to build an outside building for it. Uh, also it has integrated heating on there so we can go to like a minus 20 environment, minus 20 Celsius environment and still have the battery work. Um, that's one of the things with that specific product. Um, this one, although the batteries themselves are not outdoor rated, it comes with integrated racking. So you either have indoor or outdoor racking. So if you need it outdoor, you'd have a NEMA 4 rated enclosure for that. If you need it indoor, it's just a common UPS or server rack. Okay, um, all of our bigger batteries, so that 7.4 and this battery here would both have 10 year warranties or 38 megawatt hours energy throughput. So that's akin to like an automotive warranty where you say, you know, 100,000 miles and 10 and five years, the same as similar sort of thing. The kilowatt hour, megawatt hour throughput is the usage of the battery, how much energy is going in and out. And then the 10 years is a time limit. Uh, so the 10 years, 38 megawatt hours on each. This will be seven years. It's a little more of a consumer price product for uh, developing world markets and or sort of tiny homes, cottages, etc. cetera. Um, it's a more aggressively priced, so it's got a little bit shorter warranty. Because we're closed loop, we can do very complex charging from AC coupled sources in power electronics. So whether that's Schneider, Solar, SMA or otherwise, the AC coupling is very easy to integrate with our batteries. Um, so the answer is yes. Yes, and in fact, um, because we have this closed loop charging capability, we, although again, we rely on the inverter charger or the power electronics to do the actual charging, but because we are controlling that charge algorithm and those charge voltage set points, and we can tailor the charge voltage dynamically through the course of a charge cycle from a generator, we can typically recharge our batteries at 25% less time than if they weren't connected to that power electronics. So that, you know, in the case of a diesel gen set, what that means is 25% uh, charging time is a 25% reduction in diesel consumption. So they're, yeah, they're very optimally designed for that, and that's one of the aspects of us being an off-grid battery. Uh, the quick answer to that one is if it's not communications configured, right, the, the limit is virtually li limitless, you know, whatever the practical limits of your electrical bus would be. If you want the closed loop communications, you're limited to 20 nodes of each battery. Now, because the batteries are all different capacities, that 20 nodes equates to a different amount of battery bank limitation. In this particular case, 20 times 7.4 is just shy of 150 kilowatt hours. Uh, in this battery's case, you know, you're talking about 1.5 kilowatt hours times 20 would be a 30 kilowatt hour limit per battery bank. And in this one, because it's a five kilowatt battery, 20 times five would be 100 kilowatt hours. So yeah, th those are the limits. It depends on the size of the battery, but essentially 20 nodes of whatever flavor. And that's an inverter function, but we very commonly do work with uh, 
you know, the, the major three-phase suppliers. So, you know, Schneider Electric has a multi-cluster sort of a capability to take three inverters and make three-phase off that. We are integrated with that product. SMA, Sunny Islands, the same sort of thing. Um, Victron Energy does the same sort of scheme and we, we uh, collaborate with them. So yeah, three-phase systems, again, being off-grid, it's quite common on bigger systems to be three-phase. It's something we do very well. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, we're on the S-Chip approved list. Uh, there is a combination on there with inverters, like it's a battery and inverter combination to qualify and it's an efficiency test, but any of the major brands that are UL approved on the inverter side for those applications, we are SGIP qualified with. So that's uh, Solar, Schneider Electric, uh, off the top of my head, uh, I want to say there's another one as well, but yeah, yes, SGIP is something we can do. So all of our batteries are uh, uh, either lithium ferrophosphate, lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, whatever you want to call them, but they're cobalt-free batteries, virtually incapable of thermal runaway, um, very much the, the characteristics of LFP cells are very uh, optimal for doing fast charging, high current system design, so yes, all LFP.